What's up, nature freaks? Dave and Jeremy here from Nature In Your Face. Today, we're hitting the bike trail once again, looking for a state endangered turtle called the Blandings Turtle. That's right, and this is a perfect area to be riding. Animals are always crossing here. We're right next to a river. It's a uh, beautiful habitat. It really is. Just to ride this is incredible. All year long, as the seasons change, it's a beautiful path. Yep, lots of herps on this road, so we're gonna get right to it, and we're gonna try to find a Blandings Turtle. Come with us. Ding, ding. <laughs> Nature in your face! We gotta hurry up. Sun is going down. Go speed racer! Go, go speed racer! Woo! Gonna get him. Alright, guys, we're about what, two miles into our bike ride. Nothing yet. Here's some frogs blowing up to the left of us in this marshy area. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet, so hopefully we'll find something sooner than later. Yeah, this is the same trail that uh, we recorded the uh, snappy turtle laying the eggs on, so that I recorded. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dave wasn't here, it's not a big deal. We're always a team, though, when we're apart. But there's a river right here, and turtles are always crossing this bike trail, which is incredible. If you don't have a bike trail where turtles and snakes just hang out, you need to move. Uh, so we're hoping we can find that super cool blanding turtle, uh, but so far, nothing. All right, we got a little water snake I just saw crossing the road. And here he is. Look at this beautiful little snake right here. Not a Blandings, but we'll take it. Coming from the river. And they get stuck at this fence. I'm not really sure what the fence is for. Um, I assume they have some purpose for it, but here's this little snakey, little feisty guy. Probably gonna bite me. Oh, there we go. See that? He doesn't know. He just thinks I'm a giant. But then he stopped, so beautiful creature. I'll quit stressing him out. See you later, buddy. Flick that little tongue. Say hello for the camera. Well, I'm not all that surprised that I just encountered this queen snake. That's because they're a riparian species. And that simply means they live in habitat adjacent to rivers. I guess that means this guy lives in a van down by the river. <laughs> Not exactly what I'm looking for, but pretty cool consolation prize. All right, another snake, this time an eastern milk snake. Got to get him off the bike path, because bikes will kill him just as easily as a car would. Booyah! Here we go. Finally got our target species. Go check it out. Guys, we are freaking out. At first, you're like, why do you even care about that black rock on the ground? This is a Blandings turtle yep. lifer for me and Dave. Well, actually, I did find a really small one, but it was a tiny little hatching. Okay. It was a few years okay. ago. Not, not something this beautiful. <laughs> Way to be a buzzkill, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, lifer adult and the Blandings turtle. As you can see, we're not touching. This is a state protected species, endangered species. We are not going to be handling this. I'm on the other side of this wall just for room and that's where the turtle wants to be. Yeah, and this is one of the more fragile species throughout its range. One of the reasons is because it takes 14 to 20 years for this thing to produce viable eggs. So imagine that it has to escape predators, habitat loss, anything else nature throws at it before it can even lay eggs 20 years later. That's, that's, that's why it's not doing real good in a lot of the areas. Now the cool thing about that though, once it reaches that 14 to 20 year maturity and it starts to lay eggs, they defy aging they do not age the way typical animals do and they can lay eggs viable eggs 80 to 90 years old um, so they don't really show the typical aging of an animal which is incredible that is they don't even need plastic surgery it's incredible <laughs> <laughs> they stay young and fit yep um, it is very shy as you can see and it's uh it, you got it withdraws in its shell it is hinged like a box turtle. you know these things are kind of like a cross between a box turtle and a common map turtle uh, mm -hmm. that is because they're semi-aquatic so you'll see them out of the water they like to be in the water as well where they'll prey on frogs fish but they'll also eat berries and other vegetation so they are omnivores they're a really really cool and unique turtle you can't shut the shell all the way as tight so they're known as like semi box turtles sometimes now what's crazy is right over here to our right is a big river 
And so it's possible, highly possible, this turtle came from the other side of that river, fought the current, <laughs> got over here, and now another hurdle, another obstacle. It needs to get on the other side of this wall. And the Fish and Wildlife Service, they have put gates that they open, but they're only like every 50 to 100 yards. And I can see one down here. And this turtle has to find its way to that opening to get through. To and be they, they obviously do that though, because we're finding them. So. It's dry right now. If we had some water on the carapace, you would see that it has these little flecks of yellow in it. So it's it's a lot more beautiful than kind of that blackish brown turtle that's blending in with the Plus leaves. Plus it's here. old. I mean, this one has damage to the shell. It's worn out. And so it's just not as vibrant as it probably once was. So <laughs> speaking of age, these things can live close to a hundred years. This turtle right here is definitely an Who adult. Knows, yeah. He already mentioned, you can't really tell if they age. This thing really could be 50, 60, 70 years or older, or maybe it's 20 years, we'll never know. Which makes it more incredible that we're here, we're this close to it. I mean, we just get amped up about being by nature. You know, and Dave said they were shy. I mean, that's what's cool about this one being on land. It can't drop off a log into the water. Uh, this is just an epic um, experience, in my opinion. Yeah, now this is the warmest day so far of the year. We're only in April, it hit 80. It was our first 80 year, uh, 80 year, 80 degree day of the year. And um, so that's why these guys are out. They're, they're looking for mates. But another unique thing about these turtles is like they- Like an Australian friend or? <laughs> my, <laughs> <laughs> they are very cold tolerant. Sometimes you will see them even in late March and early April here when the temperature's hovering around 40 degrees. So they're a very cold tolerant species, but this is a really warm day and there's a lot of species. We found snapping turtles earlier in the day. I, rode past a milk snake on the bike as well as a queen snake just coming up here when uh, we, we encountered this turtle. So yeah, that's awesome. Did you mention how up. they overwinter? Did you talk about that? I, I didn't. I just mentioned their cold tolerance. Yeah, so they can they overwinter. Obviously, we're here in northern Illinois. It gets really, really cold and they can burrow down into the mud under, uh, yep. you know, two, three feet of water. And these guys can survive um, through that harsh winter and then they come out unscathed, basically. Yeah, they absorb oxygen through their skin. They can even hold their breath a long time. They will go underwater and hold their breath for hours. But obviously, when they uh, hibernate, they're underwater for seven, eight months. Right, right. And they yeah, yeah. only Super oxygenate slow, their bodies through that, uh, you know, that skin respiration, which is really incredible. It's, yeah, it's amazing that they survive this long. Yeah, so, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm, anytime we find something for the first or second time, it's super exciting. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed being able to experience our excitement on finding an adult blanding turtle for the first time in the wild. Yep. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature in Your Face. If you did like this episode, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I don't know why the heck anybody wouldn't do that anyway, because yeah, our channel is awesome. Yeah. Ring the bell so when we put a video up, you're not like, does Nature in Your Face ever make videos? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode of Nature in Your Face. Snake in the dark. Oh, it's a fox snake right here. Dude, check out this awesome fox snake in the dark. Vibrating, yeah. Little tail vibrating. I'm a rattlesnake, but I don't know what a rattlesnake is. Well, guys, kind of cool ending to our little bike hike. It's pitch black out, and I luckily saw this thing before I ran it over. Just an American toad. Very cool. Little clump guy here. Look at that. We also have the Fowler's toad in these areas, but uh, you can easily tell the American toad with the speckled belly, also the uh, warts all over it. It's, the warts are much more prominent and more abundant on the American toad than on the uh, Fowler's toad. So, pretty cool last second find here. Just gonna let him go on his way. Hot top, see you later, buddy. <laughs>